In this video, we will be working on this poster created in the style of the Swiss graphic design. This style originated in the 1950s and was characterized by its emphasis on clarity, simplicity and precision. To my mind, what makes this style so unique and instantly recognizable are its use of grid systems, sans-serif typefaces and high contrast. Now, because this graphic design style shares a lot of its philosophy with brutalism, which was a movement in architecture of roughly the same time period, I thought it would be a great idea to pair the two and make a poster about the Balfron Tower designed by Elmo Goldfinger. Let's start by creating a new document. So I'm going to press Command N and for this poster I'm going to use the letter size which is 8.5 times 11 inches and I want to use the white background. So click Create. Then we are going to create a grid for the layout. To do this we'll go to View, Guides and New Guide Layout. Now you can experiment with different layouts or different grids but for this poster I'm going to use a grid of eight columns. I'm going to set the gutter to zero. I will have 14 rows and again gutter set to zero so no gutter. And then I will set the margins to 0 0.25 inches on all sides, like this. I will also go to Settings and then Guides, Grid and Slices and then change the grid so that there is a grid line every 0 0.25 inches and I will have four subdivisions. So click OK. Now to toggle the guides on or off, you press command and semicolon like this. And to toggle the grid, you press command and apostrophe key. So this grid helps us to organize our design, to organize our layout and to keep things in proportion. OK, so next I'm going to add the heading. I will use the Type tool and for the heading I'm going to use the Helvetica typeface, which is a classic typeface used in this graphic design style. Then I'm going to click, hold and drag out to make a text box like this. And I'm going to align it with the grid, so this way I know that I'm going to have 0 0.25, quarter of an inch margin on both sides. So for the heading I'm also going to change the typeface to bold, like this, and then I'm going to type brutalism like this, then you can press command enter to exit this frame. And then we can adjust the size like this so it occupies the full width of, of the poster. Like this. And then we can also align it to the middle like this. Then we can use the Move tool to bring this up a bit. So once again we can align it with the grid like this. Okay, next I'm going to zoom in like this. And then I'm going to draw another text frame like this. But I'm going to make it a little bit shorter than two full columns. Like this, so I hope you can see there's this is one column, this is two columns. I need to reduce the text size to regular, like this, and reduce the size to eight points. 
and I'm going to align this to the left. And then I'm going to add some text. So I'm going to type architect, and the architect's name is Erno Goldfinger. So O in his name has an accent. So if I go to type, panels, and then glyphs panel, I need this O with two dots on top of it like this. Now I can close this panel and then make a space. Goldfinger like this and then I will press enter and then I will add 1965 to 1967. These were the years when this tower was built and I will add grade 2 listed which means that this building is protected. Okay now I can Use the size of this of this text box. I can press Command and Enter, and then another thing I can do is, I, if I scroll down in the Properties panel, where it says Type Options, if I tick, if I click on this icon, this will turn all the text into all caps. So I think I will need to increase the size of the panel very slightly like this. Okay, so now I will duplicate this text box by dragging it onto the new layer icon. So I will move one copy like this, press and hold the shift key to make sure that the two remain aligned. And then I'm going to type the address of this tower. So it's St. Saint, Saint Leonard's Way, London East 14, 6LN, like this. Okay, now I can zoom out a little bit, select both of these, take the Move tool, and then bring this up like this. So now I'm going to align the end of this text block with the end of the letter M, like this. And then I will move this one. So now I'm going to break the grid slightly. I will align it with this line of the letter L. Like this. Then if I select both of them once again, I can bring these down so that the first line aligns with this line of the grid. Okay, now if I press command semicolon and command apostrophe, I can view this without any guides, without the grid. Okay, so I will bring this down again. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle. So to do this, I'm going to use the rectangle tool. The shortcut is U. So once again, I'm going to use the grid. I will click around here and then drag down and do something like this. Looking at the top, I do not want to have the stroke. I don't want to have a border around it. So I'm just going to set this to zero. And another thing, when drawing shapes like this, it may help if we turn the snapping on, like this. So 
now we can even resize it and this will stick to the grid like this i'm also going to change this color to this yellow because i think this gives me a really good contrast with with the type and i think it also works with the style that we are going for like this okay so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go to this image and i want to cut out the building from the from the background so to do this you can use the object selection tool the shortcut is w on the keyboard then we can select the cloud which is a better more detailed result and then click on select subject like this and then we can create a mask and then we can right click say duplicate layer and then just pass this to the other document like this okay so now we can move this around and we will need to resize this image slightly before we start resizing i think it's a good idea if we convert this to a smart object because if we keep adjusting the size so that we don't lose any quality so i'm going to press command t to transform and i'm just going to reduce the size of this maybe i will bring this down to lose this line like this i think this looks good and then once again i am going to roughly align these lines in an image with the top of this text i want it to overlap slightly i don't want it to be perfectly aligned something like this then double click and i can move this around i don't want this to be dead center i think it would work better if it's slightly offset if if it is positioned slightly off center maybe i can position this with i can align this bit with this line of the letter t again roughly like this okay i could leave this as is but i think it would look better if i convert this to black and white so option click onto the black and white adjustment layer so i'm going to clip this to the layer below to the image like this and then i can play around with the contrast like this click ok again i could make a curves adjustment layer clip it and once again adjust the contrast of the image because i want to make it very contrasty like this click ok and then another thing i could do is if you click on the image itself you could change the blending mode to multiply like this as an effect or another thing we could do and i think i would prefer this is if i add another adjustment layer hue saturation again option click clip it then click on colorize and then i'm going to turn this into some blue like this turquoise cyan blue something like this and then i can play around with um, saturation as well like this okay so i will leave it to this but you can take it further tweak it 
play around and maybe come up with a design of your own.